who's excited to make some art with whatever the heck is in here? It's me. The answer was me. <laughs> first things first, we gotta find out what's inside. And then we'll make art with it. And what is this guy? So as always, inside the Arts Next Plus box, you get the beautiful bubble wrap bag. All right, let's see what's inside here. Very unique looking palette knife. I thought it was gonna be like a bunch of the same palette knife, but some of them are different. It's by Alt Alternatives. It's the palette knife set. Oop. Now these are made of plastic. There's two that are a bit more of like common shape, I guess. Stupid plastic. Here are the five palette knives. You've got your more common shapes, and then you've got a butcher. The butcher palette knife. This one's like a butter knife. This one's like stabby looking. This one's your diamond. And this one's like a toy that you give your kid and you tell it's a knife and it cuts like the fruit, and the fruit's actually connected with Velcro. They still make those. <laughs> anyway, I do have a metal palette knife that I do actually use rather regularly when I'm painting, but I wonder what we're gonna use all of these for. I wonder if that's going to be our actual like medium. Next up, we have some golden open slow drying acrylics. I do have a couple colors in open and I do like them because they do dry a little slower. You kind of get a slow drying acrylic. I mean, that's what it says. Because sometimes acrylics can dry just a little too fast. And so these are much slower, although I feel like they dry too slow, but that's just a personal preference. All right, we also have the menu listing the exclusive Art Snacks Plus items, which is, this isn't acrylic. Oh, I didn't read the last word. It's a gloss. Acrylic gloss. Don't look at my naked thumb. Rude. So it's a gloss, which means it's probably something we're going to put on top of something else. There must be some other colors. I mean, we have a white canvas here and white. We're going to need something. A little vavoom, you know? That was the Arts Next Plus. These are Arts Next Plus. This canvas is also Arts Next Plus. So this is the 100% Belgian linen archival canvas board. You can tell it's a board because... Sounds like one. Suitable for oils, acrylics, and alkids. Alkides? Those were the items that were exclusive to the Art Snacks Plus. And then inside here is what also came in this month's Art Snacks box. We have Smarties. Honestly, just an overall delicious candy. All right, so here's the menu for the Art Snacks box. So let's just dive in. We have the Art Snacks sticker. It's uh, kind of blotchy looking. I like the color scheme. We have a Derwent Ink Tense pencil. So it's a watercolor pencil. It's in the color Lagoon. We also have an HB pencil by Derwent. We have a small oval paintbrush in the size six by King Art. We have a Kuretake, can't read this. Where's the menu? Kuretake Zig IK food pen. Traditionally used for calligraphy. Has a hard brush and is filled with water base. Black pigment ink. And then finally, what color do we have? Sap green, oh. Is this like one of the colors that I do have? But it is also the golden open slow drying, so it's going to be very, very slow, as the name suggests. I'm gonna see what color I have. This is a set I was referring to. It does have sap green. The exact same color. Instead of opening this, I think I'll just use that guy. Still fits with the challenge. I can just give this to someone else and it won't be used. So that seems like a better option. So we have sap green, we have black pen, we have this lagoon color. And then I guess a gloss. We'll have to like see how they look. I'll just grab my sketchbook. Perfect. Space right here. Thank you. There's space right here. I'll do a little bit of a swatch and then we'll do our final whatever we decide to go with on here. Do you want to read a little bit about what they expect me to do with all these palette knives? Doesn't really say. I'm guessing we want to try and like do something more abstract. Try the pencil. Very soft. Add a little water maybe. Ooh. It does seem a little desaturated for my taste. If it looks really good with our sap green, then I'll take that back. Dump it right in here. Means I can't close this sketchbook for a million years, but <laughs> perks of being an artist. <gasps> Guess we're using my sketchbook. So does it make it more transparent? Is that what it's supposed to do? Ew, that kind of. My first thought was kind of gross, but it does look very much like a leaf. Ooh. Gets those like veinies, like a leaf. Try it without the gel. See what the difference. Okay, yeah, it's obviously more opaque. And we have the pen. And then we have a pencil. I'm not entirely sure why they included a pencil. This is extremely limited for a color palette and also very random as in, like a mixed media. This is going to really push me. 
the colors don't really have all that much contrast. Should I just like throw in the towel and bring in some white paint and make it more pastel? Or do I try and push myself and try and find a way to make something visually pleasing with what we've got? I try using the paintbrush, I'm drawing like actual leaves. Hmm, this does work pretty good for this sort of situation. I kind of wish we had like a pink to add like a pop of floral, but maybe we should just try and really push our green and go for something plant-like, which is really weird because I literally drew a plant. Let's recreate that baby. Let's see what happens. It's very like easy on the brain. It's just sort of like splotching down the paint. What I like about drawing plants, even though I don't do it very often, is that they're so abstract, you don't have to do anything perfect. The brain still interprets it as a plant. So it makes it just something that's like really simple, but you can just kind of do different shapes. And as long as you're thinking of a leaf when you do it, it kind of turns out. So basically all I'm doing is making sure the end of it looks like it ends in a point and it can be as blobular as I want for the rest of it. I don't think you have to mix it with something. When you grab the gloss like afterwards, it kind of smudges it even more. Let me just experiment, see what happens. This stem needs to be a little thicker for this to stand up on its own. Oh, we got like a plant. Let me clean the brush. I wanted to see what happens if you have pencil, the blue one, do some shapes, and take the paintbrush and go over it with the acrylic gel. Blend out kind of like water would, but I assume you can blend it further. There, that was like as far as I could go. But like, look at this pastel color we're getting. I think it's actually kind of working. If I grab that, can I like, although blue doesn't really make sense on a plant, I mean, unless it's specifically a blue plant, but it does extend the distance since you can like drag your color. That's probably the biggest benefit of the gel. You can get a lighter color. It's making it more transparent, which means the color of the paper is showing through. What if I sketch something with the blue pencil and then go over it with the paint and the gel? That, stick with me, I'm thinking, would add like a sketchy layer underneath the paint, kind of like a Colorace pencil with markers. So if I draw like another plant, <laughs> Here's my little uh, rose and it's got a stem. I should also look up some references. A little gel, a little bit of the tree. We do like a first pass. Let me see how it interacts with the blue underneath. Looks kind of cool. I like the cartoony aspect of it. Ooh, what if? Add some like hatching back here. So this'll bring the white rose out. A little cross hatching. Now I'm gonna take just gel and go over that. Blend it out. Ooh. Now what's the benefit of using this over water? I have no idea. Because it makes it more like paint. Oh, hey, hey. And you still get that line because it's a watercolor pencil and that's just what happens. Blend out like the edges. See what we can get here. How far can we extend it? Maybe add a smidge of green. Just so this green doesn't feel so out of place. This is kind of interesting. I'm having fun with this because it's like out of my comfort zone, but there's a lot of leeway for mistakes and it still kind of looks artistic. What happens if I take some gel and I draw a little square? What happens if I go over that with the pencil? I can feel that it's softer, but like it doesn't make a significant difference in the way it looks. I really do like the way the green layers on top of the blue. That's that like cartoony effect that I really like, but you'd have to find a way to use mostly green in an illustration. We also have the other pencil. It's just graphite. <laughs> I don't really like mixing graphite with my illustrations because it just makes everything so muddy. If I want to use this, I think I have to wait for that to completely dry. That's not where we're at right now. But I do like the blue mixing with the green as a line art situation. So it looks like the way we're going to find contrast is by mixing different amounts of the gel. Because you see how these leaves are lighter and these leaves are darker. We have a dark leaf here. Here, lighter leaf in front, darker for like the stem. Can't turn the page because this is still wet. Do some shadows. And then we also have all these knives. Probably do something kind of plant-like with these. I don't really like the green being like smudged around because that's when it starts looking like something that excretes from your body. Not about that. Should I try and bring in a little like white acrylic paint? There she is. A little uh, titanium white. It's even the same brand. A little on here since this is my palette. Mix it with the green. Nice pastel. Pistachio. Very on trend. Add some like highlights like the sun's hitting it. I could mix it with a little yellow. I think it would look more like the translucentness of the plant. <laughs> Darker maybe. 
I wish the sap green was a little bit more neon, like some of my watercolor sap greens are. I do like the opaqueness that we're getting now with the white, even though it's cheating. Use whatever's left on my brush. I don't remember what it looked like before, but I kind of like the way it's looking. Still needs more contrast. Grab a little, trying something here. Like I said, organic shapes are usually give you a little bit of leeway. If we have this like really desaturated green, what happens if I mix acrylic gel, a little white, and the watercolor pencil. See what color we get. I'm gonna really pack it on there. We're gonna mix the gel first, create like a blue paint. <laughs> And then we're gonna add the white to make it more pastel. And we'll see if we can transfer it from there to like over here. Ooh, that's a really pretty blue. Ooh. It does look very sky blue. I bet we could go even lighter. See, now I really love pencil on there because like the blue background's bringing out the pencil. <laughs> hey. It's also gonna make that look lighter if I take some of the darker blue and put it around the edge. I'll take the white. Get in those little nooks and crannies. It is blending really well. I didn't think I'd like notice a difference, but I am. I wish we had like a terracotta color for a nice pot. Draw a sketchy box. Yeah, where it goes over the paint. It's not drawing as well. Mix that in. Do you feel like I need to wait for it to completely dry before I fix it and finish it? This is one of those art mediums that you have to like take a break. <laughs> Who takes breaks? Now do I want to look up maybe like references of a plant that has like little white flowers? Because we'll have the white of the canvas and then I'm going to cheat and use the white acrylic too. <laughs> Why don't I just try to make this? Like if you sum it down to its most simplest form, it's just a bunch of blobs. I'm just gonna go in it. Because the cool thing about paints is like we can like scratch them off. Oh wait, we need a yellow. Let me see if I can create that like bright green color. Okay, let's try Indian yellow hue. Oh, that's a little orangey. See if we can get this more yellowy green. Yeah, it's just too desaturated. Maybe I thrown it in there. But that's not, that's not quite the right. Need something more fluorescent. I have literally the citron green. Seems close. And I also have benzimidozone yellow. Medium. <laughs> try this first. This is like my cheap acrylics. You can avoid those. I would. Oh, came out a little fast. Maybe it needs a little white. I skipped the class on mixing colors at school. Just kidding, I didn't go to art school. That's actually looking better. Okay. It's a lot closer. It's not this lime color. Maybe this yellow's too burnt. Try this guy. Mix it with a little bit of yellow. See, I think this yellow is too saturated. We might have found the color. I think I've got everything I need to uh, attempt to just recreate my little reference on here. So let's put this here. First, I want a bunch of this sap green. So I guess start with a deep shape right here. So we're just gonna draw these shapes, which is weird because I would usually, like I did our sketches, I drew the leaves. Whereas this, we're drawing from a reference, so we're drawing the shapes that we see. Probably gonna need a couple coats of this. Mostly an opaque art supply here. More up here. Just the rough shape of it. Trying to figure this out. This is so not how I usually approach anything. We're trying something new. We're like drawing the inverted leaf shapes. Now this whole right side is like almost all dark green. We're just gonna have to shrink some of our leaves. I'm realizing that I drew everything a little bit bigger than my canvas. Well, let's be a little bit more abstract with it. I'm clearly gonna have to change things to make it fit. But what I'm trying to do is maintain as much of the composition as possible because obviously some great photographer took their time to make sure that the composition was nice. I don't want that to go to waste. I'll have my uh, reference linked below too. There's some dark stuff here. Here. I love the like randomness of where the splotches are. Kind of visually pleasing to me. This is clearly gonna need another layer. Mixing it with some white, but I might add just a tiny bit of gel to our not slow drying white. I guess I could have just used the slow drying white that I have. <laughs> Grab some of that, a little bit of this. Got a mid-tone kind of color. Put a little bit of this on. So this is a leaf. No, it's usually sketch, right? <laughs> it's a little green though. Saturated thing. We add a little more of this. Deepen it up. 
I kind of wonder if the blendiness is working against me right now. I need a deeper green over here. A little bit of white. Ended up just mixing with the paintbrush. <laughs> There's a big leaf back here. All the way to the edge. Fills in that shape. Blocking in the shapes, making sure that they look like separate pieces. Try not to leave too many white spaces either. Hey, hey. The integrity of the Americana paints are not quite golden level, so when I try to mix them, they kind of like fade into the distance. So this is all one leaf. Now over here is where we have our really green leaf. I'm gonna take this guy. A little bit of the yellow. What? Mix that up. That should be our nice veiny leaf. We have to add in the veins. I think there's a leaf around here. <laughs> yeah, just getting everything down is our first step here, so let's work on that. It needs to come this way. There's a leaf here. And down here, there's some leaves. Kind of everything in this drawing. Fill in the space. Interesting, interesting. There's something back here. Kind of lost where that is in the reference, so we're just going to finagle something. Part of me wonders if I should take a little break and wait for it to dry completely before trying to do the flowers. Or should we try to sketch them out? I say as I'm doing it. And then there's one up here. Go over some of this. One right here. Yeah, the reference ended up being more like a guideline. Better just in the wrong spot. Yeah, my flowers ended up being much more smooshed. I think I want to move this guy up. Sketch that in a little. I mean, filling in this area. Separating it a little bit from that other flower. I think that's better. This is all flower. Make sure the shape is kind of there. And then this is a flower. This is a flower. That one really ended up very green, didn't it? Blob some paint. Yeah, I think this is pretty good groundwork. We're just gonna fill in all these white areas with some green, whatever feels right. been approximately 45 minutes. Took a nice lunch break. It was delicious, thanks for asking. It's still a little tacky. Mostly where there's the sap green because it's a slow drying one, whereas the white is a little bit more dry. Let's get back into it. I cleaned everything. I was like, oh, it looks pretty. Then I brought the reference up again and I'm like, oh, it's got a long way to go. <laughs> I and mean, there's obviously some wet spots, but we'll just make do. Pour in some paint. Add some of this green. And then we need some sap green. Drying times are just so annoying. <laughs> I like that quick dry. We'll use the not slow drying white. I also found that this stuff, open acrylic gel, worked really well for creating gradients after the fact. We've got this handy too. Guess we'll start up in this corner. So we'll start with this, draw in the side of the leaf. We're gonna add a lot of white to it and the green. If you look on these things, they'll tell you how opaque to transparent they are. So the white is very opaque. My yellow is actually mostly transparent. We want it to be a bit more opaque. Add in some of these guys. My hand's so shaky. How do you even do details without being able to put your hand actually on it? It's a little bit of a darker color. And then this side needs to be a little darker. This can be that stem. Bring this over here. Try and draw in the vein on this leaf. I tried to fill in the spaces between the veins. Maybe if I take a little bit of that gel, put it right there, and we'll use that to like blend out these things with a clean brush. There's also a shadow. It's just looking like blobs, isn't it? It's actually a different leaf here. Just fill that in. See, this is where it gets tricky for me, is trying to actually turn that first layer of blob into something more recognizable. And I don't have the like, hand dexterity for this. Uh, control of the wrist. Let's grab some of that gel so we can blend it out. Maybe using some gel to blend that out? No, because I think I want that harsh edge. It gives it that shadowy appearance. Well, there's actually a leaf right here that I missed. Just waiting for everything to dry before I added it in. 
It's over that rose. It's shading underneath it. A little bit of that yellowy color. It's blending together. Just have to wait on that to dry a little. Blend that out. Just adding in more layers of things. Creating different shapes. Maybe add some yellow here. Separate it from that other leaf. I feel like it's coming along. I kind of like the blobbiness of it, but we're going to try and do the flowers a bit more, even though they kind of look like flowers. So I think we'll mix a lot of white with this teeny smidge of the yellow green. Start with a petal in the back. And there's a petal here, petal here, petal thing here. Oh, hey, it looks more like a rose already. A little goes a long way. It does need a little more shading though. Let me grab a little more green maybe. This petal should be darker than this petal. This petal needs to be even darker than that. Trying to keep it subtle. This is one of those things that just looks better from a distance, you know? I get my head really close, you see all the meh when you like step away from it. It's got some charm. Let's do this one next. We'll start with some deeper shadows. And move into the white. Just throw in those petals. Stroke for each. I wish this paint wasn't so transparent though. Kind of looks like the reference, but I don't think it looks as good as that one. So I'm going to take what I like about that one and maybe apply it here. So add like some uh, shadow in the center there and some around here. Define the separate petals a bit more. Maybe cut into this petal. It's too big. Okay, so now this one's actually supposed to be brighter. These two are actually in shadow in my reference. But I guess we're kind of throwing light out the window here. <laughs> Oops, that had yellow on it. I guess we're having a yellow flower. I just need a little shadow in here. So layers of petals here. Layer over some of this area that's not quite opaque as I'd like it. These aren't roses, are they? They could be roses. Very bloomed of roses. <laughs> just go over it with this slightly green color so that I can add white for the petals. It might make it easier. Mixing the dark green with the gel to get it a little transparent. Push this leaf a little further into the background. I think this needs to be more space between these two flowers. Let's try to add a little white in here for some detail. Try and find the petals. Little, uh, oversimplified rose. Try and add some petals over here. This angle's difficult. You can't really see the parts that actually make it look like a rose or whatever flower it is. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking it's not a rose now that I'm seeing some of the stem, but we don't care. I look like a rose of some kind, floral, whatever. Maybe add a little more white. There. And there just comes off the edge a bit better. I feel like this is my like peak. I can see the differences between it and the reference, but I have no idea how to make it look like that. And this is kind of working in a leaf favor. We need to draw in the veins, maybe with this guy. And we'll just try drawing our little veins of the leaf. Bring in that like cartoony vibe. You can also go over this with the gel maybe and blend out the blue color. Blends it in in some places. It doesn't really make anything look more blue. If I push too hard, the um, canvas comes out. I guess we do have to wait for it to dry. Just add an extra leaf in there. Maybe over here too. <laughs> Going over it a little more. A little rim lighting. I think it'll look like petals, like curl on the end. This might be my favorite one. No! Guess we're just gonna have to make that part of the flower. I don't know, I just keep adding blobs and hoping for the best. Is that how all painters do it? I think that's getting close to where I wanted that flower. But these leaves, man! Like, don't have enough variation in some of them. I'll make that a darker leaf. Another one up here. Maybe I'll just get rid of that one. Clearly not working. Just make it all one leaf. Filtered. Blend these out. 
Maybe if I just add a little white. I already got these two. I'm just supposed to overlap. Like separate pieces. And now I feel like I could fit like a limer green leaf there. I have to wait for it to dry, but let me try. <laughs> well, let's just try it. Now this is supposed to be another leaf. Don't know if I can get that to show up, especially not when it's wet. But looking back at my sketchbook, I can't believe that I made this color out of a watercolor pencil. That looks just like acrylic paint. And now I wish there was blue down here. Let me just use a little pencil for some <laughs> quick dimension. Has like a sketchiness to it. Like clearly the uh, paint isn't well defined, but I think going over it with pencil kind of like just gives it that sketchbook vibe. I like whatever that is going on there. Ooh, let go. Thank you. <laughs> Last rose. Different look. Got paint everywhere. Hopefully it's acrylic, so it cleans pretty easily for the most part. But I think that's it for uh, me today. So thanks for spending time with me. Let me know what you drew or painted along. And I gotta send a big thank you to Art Snacks Box for sending this box my way to try out and to share with you guys. I'll have a link in the description as always. Hope you all have a delicious evening. Slow waffles. Bye.